Hello everybody, in this video I am going to be doing some mixed media card making with you. All of these cards turn out very sort of vintagey, antique vibes. I really, really like all these ones and also kind of like September, october -y colours, lots of warm, earthy tones, which is not usually my go-to, but I really like them, you'll see how they turn out. Um, as always, when I'm doing mixed media cards or any sort of card making, I will start with a paper pack or a paper collection to kind of use as my base and get me going and things. So for this one, I'm using AB Studios, uh, In the Past and Never Too Late. I think my main backing papers I chose from In the Past and then adding some little uh, fussy cut pieces, ephemera pieces from Never Too Late, those lovely like tickets and embroidery scissors and typewriters and bits and pieces like that. I don't usually do my fussy cutting at this stage but I've just sort of cut out the bits that I'm going to fussy cut and put them aside. So I've created five card bases or card blanks and I decided to take three of them and run them through embossing folders to give them a lovely bit of texture and things. So the small one has sort of a wood grain texture, the big A5 one has birds going around the edges and an oval shape and then one has a damask and then of course as always I'm going to add clear gesso to the base of every card. The cards that had the embossing on I added a little bit of water to the clear gesso just because it made it a little bit easier to go over those embossed or debossed shapes. When it wasn't watered down it went a bit clumpy and funky so yeah just to help it smooth over those shapes and then while the gesso is still drying I'm adding some bits and pieces of ripped up washi it's quite good to add it while it's still drying because it helps the washi stick down to the cards now people always ask me where do i get my washi tape from and for the most part the answer is i don't know i either don't remember because i've had it so long or often it's sometimes i get because i order washi tape for my shop i might get an extra freebie or something or see one that i just throw into my basket just for me you know so it's quite hard to say where each one is from if you search Etsy, eBay, all of the places for wide vintage washi, you can find all the things. But yes, just ripping it up, layering it on the cards like so. As I said, while the gesso is still a little bit wet, and on the cards that had the embossing, I'm taking a bone folder just to press the washi down a bit, help stick it down where all the texture is. Next up, I'm going to add some stenciling. Now, usually when I do these cards, I will use pretty much the same stencil and the same medium on each card, but I decided to mix it up a little bit this time. So I've got a different stencil on each card and I'm using a mix of mediums, as I said. So this one here first is Cosmic Shimmer Grit Paste through this damask stencil. The grip paste, by the way, if you're really, really sensitive to certain sounds, I don't recommend you get the grip paste because it's very, it makes quite a noise when you put it through a stencil. I did a real-time video a good year or so ago <laughs> using that and everyone was like, oh, it sounds horrible. So just a little FYI for you there. On this card, I'm adding Cosmic Shimmer Granite Paste and I'm using that on some of the other cards as well, but I have different colours of the granite paste. I forget the names of each one of them but I'll leave like a link to a general granite paste and you can see the different colours. I really love this stuff but you do have to be careful about it drying out. I often add a little bit of water when I finish using it and use some um, press and seal wrap as well to cover it when you know underneath the lid. I do find I could get slightly annoyed about how many mediums you have to use press and seal wrap for because it's like I paid for this, it should not need me to use extra things to stop it drying out, but there you go. Especially in the UK where press and seal isn't that common if you have to spend a fortune on it on Amazon to get it and can't get it from like the Dollar Tree or anything. But that's a side rant. Anyway, the the larger card, I yeah, that was a Prima Finnevere stencil with the old style writing. I used Prima paper paste on that one and then I think I went back to the granite paste. Here I am sorting out all the bits and pieces I'm going to use for fussy cutting and doing all my fussy cutting while all those pastes dry. I have some of these little die cut books from the works and um, they're by like the Deco Time brand. They're quite common in mainland Europe, places like Germany and the, the Netherlands. I think you could quite easily get these bits from the store. What's a store called? Is it Action? I so desperately want to go to an Action and buy all these things. But yes, also using Minte Fussy Cutting Books. I did look at the book that has all the lovely autumnal flowers and things because I thought maybe I could bring those in. But looking at them, the colours were just a bit too strong to use with the card bases I had. Like, they are the same earthy tones, but they were much brighter. It just, it just didn't work out. Um, some vellum pieces, again, from one of those 
brands like with the die cutting books if you're in the UK you often find them in the range in the works and I've, honestly I have no idea if you're in the US where you can get those from if anybody knows shout out in the comments so you can you know help others find them and then pulled out what did I do then did some more fussy cutting oh some marry me small art products as well some of her vellum pieces and the antiquario paper pad I think and then I pulled out an AB Studio vellum tag and then I have my big pile of things fussy cut and ready to use as embellishments. The All the stenciling was pretty much dry apart from the, the granite paste which needs a little, little bit of extra drying. You can hear it dry though if you get a heat, heat tool on it you'll start to hear it kind of crack. Is it dry? It's very handy and useful that. Then stenciling all completely dry making sure you know it completely 100% dry gonna add my colors and paints and inks and things so I'm going very much for metallic lovely golds and bronzes sort of colors I pulled out this set this is the Kurataki starry colors set really really love this one their watercolors are so creamy and delicious and lovely they're almost not watercolors like maybe closer to gouache I don't know but they're great I love them also was using Windsor and Newton gold drawing ink. I've got some distress stain in tarnished brass, the spray stain, and also a couple of colors of Heidi Swap, which as many of you know is now discontinued. But in case you have them lying around, I'm using the gold and the tea color. So adding water to the card, so the medium, wherever it is, ink or paint flows really nicely around the stenciling, adding, mostly adding it with a brush, maybe a couple of splatters here and there. Um, I was making a mess so I decided to pull out some kitchen roll to use as a little bit of a base to catch all my excess splatters and yeah I keep going back and forth between them you kind of you know you might do something on one card that you think oh that would work really nicely on that one I've already done so you bring that one back and add a bit of that to it and then you see another effect and you go oh that would work really nicely on this card so you know you keep going between them and adding things and can't really take away things with these mediums but you know you can add the slimline card that you see me working on now, this one was my dad's birthday card, so you'll probably notice I put a little bit more effort into this one. Obviously, I put effort into all of them, but I wanted to make this one particularly special for my dad, so more things end up on this one, a little more time spent on it throughout the video, but still going with my inks and splatters. I think I'm pretty much done there. I thought that card had quite a lot of dark ink, so I brought in that really light, it's almost a silvery champagne-y gold colour for some really light splashes and splatters and I think I'm pretty much done. Yeah, where there's darker inks it's nice to add a little bit of a highlight somewhere as well and here we go, gonna start adding embellishments. So on this one it's gonna have, this is the really really grungy steampunky mixed media one. So I have the the wooden pieces, the little steampunky cogs and gears and stuff I'm gonna add that vellum tag into the card and actually punch it into the card with an eyelet using my crocodile I also have some metal pieces I'm gonna add to this those sort of uh, filigree ornate corner things that I'm gonna bring in and the heavier parts of so the wooden parts and the metal pieces I am gonna glue down with heavy body gel by Prima slash Finever it's from their art basics range it's quite fun when you stick the filigree things down and push them down all the little bits of gel come through the holes like little noodles or something so make sure to wipe those off otherwise they will dry like little worms coming through your card and nobody wants that then I'm gonna take some of the more standard gel medium by Prima this is a 3d gloss gel just any sort of gel medium same sort of thing and add big chunks of it between all those cogs and gears because I'm gonna add a rusted patina effect to these. And I do that by adding um, art stones. I've got medium sized art stones and little mini ones. You can get these, Prima do them. My ones are by Imagination Crafts. I think a bunch of, oh, um, oh, what's the name? I'm completely blanking. Hobbylicious, they make them as well. You can also get the same effect if you use microbeads and things like that. So as you see, I just sort of pour them on and push them into shape and then let all the excess tip off, just like you would do with, you know, like glitter. 
or something like that. Now these need quite a while to dry. I'm just moving them around a bit so I have them in the kind of roughly exact places I want them. But yes, they need quite a while to dry. I always leave them overnight. So next up, I'm going to start working with my other cards and working out what embellishments I'm going to put on them and building up the embellishments, sticking them down. I decided to bring in some more of these vellum flowers from the Marry Me Small Art paper pack. And yes, just building up all my embellishments, figuring out where to put them. Before that, however, I am going to add a little bit of wax paste to the cards where I have the embossing on to really, really highlight and bring out that embossing. I'm using Pent Art Gold Wax Paste and Prima Slash Finever Aged Brass Wax. But as you see, you're just using my finger to really highlight that embossing so you can actually really see it. It shows up best on camera on this card here on the damask. I think that looks really, really lovely. I'm also going to use it to go around the edges of some of the other cards, give it that lovely shimmery metallic, also kind of aged effect as well to all of them. And then I'm going to go through and spend ages and ages and ages and ages working out where I'm putting my embellishments, how I'm building them up. I always spend so long doing this, so I do cut out a lot of it for you, but I'm going to disappear myself I'm going to disappear and shut up for a few minutes and just put music over this bit so you can see what I'm doing but I don't have to constantly repeat myself over and over again by saying I put distress oxide around the edges and then I glued it down and then I moved it and then you know what I mean so yes I'll be back in a few minutes
and I am back. So on my main card, my special card, my dad's card, that'll do. Um, with the stones all dry, I give, an, give it another like tap at the back and it makes sure any loose ones come off and then use a brush to check on any loose ones again. You just you don't want them all coming off when you give it to the person. Then here I am taking, this is a patina paint set by Cosmic Shimmer and using that to paint the beads, not the beads, the, the stones and the cogs themselves and give them a lovely patina effect. So I think there's a, probably a way you're supposed to use the paint set like in a certain order but I don't do this, I figure these things out myself and how they work for me. So I started with the bronzy colour, then I add the bluey colour, and then I add the minty green, really, really patina colour on top of that. Then taking that aged brass wax by Prima and adding that on to those filigree metal bits in the corners, as well as a little bit onto the, the cogs and the patinery effects as well. I started off using a brush to do it but then um, it, it just became too difficult with a brush and I started using my finger. I think the, some of the reason I don't use my finger when doing this is because I've got, I don't have really long nails but I have longish nails and it's quite hard sometimes to get it onto your finger from the pot without your nails scooping up. Like, anyway that's just a side thing but that's what I am doing. Also adding it around the edges as well like I did with the other cards. Kind of like you would do with an ink and an oxide or whatever adding colour around the edges of something, but just doing it with wax paste instead, so it gives that, yeah, lovely aged look to everything. I found this little fussy cut piece from a long ago previous project and thought it would work, especially the way I've just stuck it in there. The the time is at the same time as one of the clocks on the vellum, so I thought that worked nicely. Then I wanted to add some of these glass bead cabochon things and I realised those little clocks on that sheet which is from the Minte junk book are the perfect size to put behind the bigger glass beads I have so I was just like yes bonus I'm making flare out of these so I cut the shape of the clock I add a decent amount of hot glue to the back of the glass bead and then you just push the paper or the fussy cut piece down onto it so you and you add enough of the glue so that you can't see it between the glass bead and the thing behind it if that makes any sense at all. I have no idea. But I'm, then I'm going to stick those down. I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I'll come back to it to add a sentiment a little bit later on. So for my sentiments, I am using my Dymo label maker and for most of them using a gold tape that I bought for it. Now a shout out to my lovely friend Maddie because she mentioned the Dymo label maker for some reason um, a while back and said she wanted to get one for making sentiments on cards and I kind of had this moment of like that's that's such a good idea why have I never thought of that like it seems so obvious now that you've said it why why so thank you Maddie for that idea I'm still annoyed at myself that I hadn't thought of it but that's what I'm gonna do did work out however with Dymo label maker or any sort of that embossing label maker style don't put heat directly on it, so don't add hot glue to the back of it because it makes the, the letter sort of melt away. So yeah, learnt that the hard way. Um, some of them I'm putting backing behind it, others not so much. This is the only card that doesn't get the Dymo sentiment. I just found a cute little sentiment in one of my bajillion packs and stuck it on another piece of that nice natural paper I'd used on a lot of the cards, and I think it looks quite cute like that. I'd start, and then putting in a glass bead on that lovely metal filigree thing. For my dad's card, I tried both gold and standard black from the label maker and decided the black looked a lot better, but it did need something to help it stand out. So I put it on some of this sort of lovely bronzy glitter foam and put it like that on top of the cogs. And I'm going to end, of course, with some Nouveau drops. On this card and the next one, I'm using the Dovecraft. Uh, enamel effects, kind of their own brand nouveau drops. These ones you have to tap from behind to flatten them out, otherwise you get a little peek on them. And then for the others, I am going to use nouveau dream drops in gold luxe and nouveau stone drops in gold rush. And hopefully not overdoing it as I often do with nouveau drops. I was really concentrating on not adding too many. On that card, I did put a nice big one on the center of that filigree piece as well, but. Yeah, there we go. I think that is going to do it for this video. Quite a bit of a longer one than usual, but I did spend a very, very long time 
on these cards but I'm really really happy with the way they turned out I love the vintagey vibe and then like the steampunky grungy one on my dad's card as well so yep that'll do it thank you so so much for watching let me know if you have any questions or anything like that relevant links in the description box I'm ignoring the siren that's going on behind me and yes please remember to leave me a thumbs up it really really helps me out chats me in the comments check out the links some of them are affiliate links so I get a teeny weeny 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 tiny kickback if you purchase from them but again it really really helps me out and yep that'll do it gonna shut up and go thank you so much bye bye